Okay, very good. And then come down to hands and knees. See if that felt okay. And then come down to lying on your belly. When you lie on your belly, your body's in a great position for the sacrum to nutate or nod forward naturally. Gravity starts to help the spine sink towards the floor. And the top of the sacrum sinks in. And those muscles are shortening. The abdominal muscles are relaxing. This can be a therapeutic position to lie in if you have sacroiliac pain. And as we continue to lie here, just noticing what's happening for you. Okay, slide one hand um, under the hip point and then the other hand under the other hip point. And when I do that, I'm feeling that my, my head's up because I'm talking, your head can just be down, relaxing on your forehead or your chin. My right hip point is, is closer to the floor right now. So the, the distance, my, my right hip point is actually snug against between my right fingers and the mat, and I have more room on the left side. So I'm gonna manually pick up that right hip point so the hips are more equal. And as I'm doing that, and you'll just do the side that works for you. If you can't tell a difference, just keep exploring. Try to assess the distance between the hip point and the floor as you push both knees down into the floor. As you push both knees down into the floor, the hip points will move and your butt will start to stick up. And you're just trying to keep the hips as level as you can. You're just doing the best that you can guess if it's not obvious to you and then isometrically stretch the knees apart. Bring your heels together to touch. The heels will lift off the floor, and you're like in a little baby Bhattakanasana where the knees are wide, the heels are touching. Squeeze the heels into one another, the knees spreading apart isometrically, the back arching, and you're keeping the hips equidistant on the floor, uh, away from the floor. Okay, release the legs down, relax the hips, see if the hips are any more level. Mine are more level now. And then resting on your forehead or your chin, whatever's more comfortable for you, lift the left leg in the air. So as you lift it, you're arching the left side of your back. And if the hip points, your hands are still under the hip points, if that left hip lifted away, roll it towards the floor so the hips are level. Push the front of your right leg down into the floor. And then let's switch sides. Press the front of the left leg into the floor. Lift the right leg. Keep the hips as equal as you can. If you're not sure, you can rock the pelvis a little left and right and then get it as centered as you can. And then lower that leg down. And we'll just alternate sides. The leg that's up in the air is not doing much. The glute is firm. The back of the leg is working but it's the leg that's pushing down into the floor that's doing a lot more work, and your hands are gauging to make sure that you've stayed level. Switching sides at your own pace. Slower is better. Slower is harder. Slower is more subtle and helps you learn your body's strategies. You can lift that leg as high as you comfortably can with no pinching in your back. Because we are encouraging that lumbar curve to come back into the body. And if you start to notice it's a lot harder for one of your legs, I want you to do more repetitions with that leg. You don't have to work symmetrically. I'm going to do my right leg twice in a row here and hold it up a little longer and ask it to lift a little higher. And then I'm going to relax. My head is up, but yours will be down. Just relax completely. See if those hip points are more equidistant from the floor now. If your head is turned to one side, you can turn it to the other side and see if they stay level. Do your hip points stay level when your head turns? 
Okay, and keeping the hands under the hip points, zip up the belly, tone, firm the glutes, and then slowly lift both legs up. Your head can stay down again. Mine's up because I'm talking. When you're just working on lifting the legs and feeling the tone through the back body, feeling and enjoying that lumbar curve, the hands are under the hip points, and right now my hip points are pushing into my fingers to sustain this leg lift. And then you can lower down. Take an inhale. As you exhale, tone the belly, tone the glutes, lift the legs. Continue to breathe here. And I'm going for a longer hold. Yours might be shorter. And you're assessing here and noticing how weak is the back, how strong is the back. Can the back do this work without pinching? And if it feels nice to you, you can start to lift the shoulders high and lift the chest high. And, and then as we're doing this, we're strengthening the back body while maintaining abdominal tone. I'm doing the opposite of what I was doing in kickboxing yesterday. So I'm not in that extremely flexed position in that class. We did lots of uh, sit-ups, more traditional front core work, rounding the spine over and over and over again, and then rounding the low back and tucking the pelvis through these kicks. And my sacrum was just like, no. So here today, I'm doing the opposite. It's powerful to do the opposite. So instead of stretching the back, stretching the hip, I'm actually shortening and contracting the muscles to make them feel better. This is quite counterintuitive for most people. If they feel discomfort, people want to stretch. But a lot of that discomfort is because there's an instability in the body. The body shortens and tightens the muscle, even putting it into spasm because it's unstable. The body cares much more about stability than it does mobility. And so it will prioritize holding the joints in place over big ranges of movement. All right, let's rest down. You can have your arms underneath the head like a pillow. Breathe into your sacral area. Breathe into the low back. Feel how the low back moves and inflates with the inhale. Low back increases its arch with the exhale. This is true of being in this relationship to gravity. It feels good. It feels nice. Bring your hands underneath the shoulders, tuck your toes under, roll the shoulders high and away from the ears, push your knees down into the floor, and I want you to bow in so you're looking towards your navel. Can you get your belly up and your ribs up? Keep your shoulders high as you do that. Now lift the pelvis, slowly straighten your arms, you're pushing up to neutral spine, hands and knees. Re-establishing that lumbar curve and just do very little. Just hang out here and see how it feels. Very good. Hoping there's an improvement there. Let's come to seated. Swing your legs around in front of you. And we'll keep the knees bent. So even if you're flexible, you know you can straighten the legs easily. Again, we're trying to shorten the tone increase the tone through the whole back body and it's all one muscle with different names it's the sole of the foot to the calf to the hamstring up the sacrotuberous ligament to the low back erector spinae all the way up to the neck all one muscle so we're using the bent knee to help engage that area push down with both heels and then isometrically the heels work apart push down into your hands and all of these actions together help to tone the low back. So I'm pulling back through the heel, pushing into the hands, and I feel all these muscles turn on in the back so that I can actually let go with my hands, and that's feeling nice and strong. I can relax my left leg. I just let it fall out to the side. Now my right leg is doing all the work of holding my spine step, and that's feeling okay. Now I'm going to bring the left leg back into work, push down through my left leg, pull back, relax the right leg, just let it fall out. And that's feeling okay and capable and strong too. I didn't fall back to my tailbone. I didn't tuck the pelvis 
around the lumbar spine. Now both legs will work together, pushing down, pushing isometrically apart, and definitely pulling back. Now if it pulls back and your chest moves way forward, you get a pinching in the hip crease, you need to zip up and add more tone through the front. Stretch your arms up here, elongate the spine, reaching up with the arms, as you pull back through the heels, as you stay tall, and if you're flexible, as you keep toned. And then release your hands down to either side of the hips. Put some weight onto the hands. The fingers are turned out to your sides. Roll your shoulders back. And we're in a back bend now. We're going to draw the heels closer to the buttock so that we can push into the feet and pull back through the heels and feel this arch. We're establishing this lumbar curve in multiple different planes. We did it when we were on our belly, we did it on our back, we did it in tabletop, we did it in standing, now we're doing it seated. Still pulling back through the heels isometrically apart. Very good. Let's try that same action in bridge pose. So I've scooted forward on my mat so that I can lie down, whole body's on the mat, knees bent, feet on the floor, and then I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Slide the hands under the low back and feel. It's feeling great here. It's, the lower back for me is equidistant on either side which is an improvement. That right side isn't collapsing down onto my hand. So when we do bridge pose, it is hip extension, which is the opposite of hip flexion, which means as you get higher and higher in bridge, the pelvis naturally starts to tip posteriorly and tuck, and that's fine and that's good. But what we do know is the sacrum counter uh, once you get high in your bridge. Um, which is normal and fine. I want to emphasize these are all normal movements, but when your sacrum's out, you're going to play with not getting your hips to that height. So we're going to do what I call like a half bridge. We're only lifting halfway up. So we're, start, we're going to start with a back bend on the floor before we even lift the butt up. So draw the shoulders underneath um, the body a little closer to the spine. Now the chest is puffing isometrically pull back through your heels and now there's space between your low back and the floor. I'm going to add some tone through the abdominals so I'm not arching as deeply as I can and push the heels into the floor to lift the butt up a little. Now I can lift my butt much, much higher than this, but I'm going to just coax myself into just trying letting the, the pelvis stay lower and I'm pulling back through both heels, the right one a little bit more, and letting my pelvis, my tailbone drop as my low back arches. And if I bring a hand to the, my pubic bone and the hip points, they're, they're almost parallel to the floor. The pubic bone is just very slightly higher. And I'm feeling a concentration of work through the low back, which feels great. It doesn't feel pinchy and irritated. If it feels pinchy and irritated for you, you can lift that pubic bone a little more or shrink wrap the core, kind of hugging in, corseting through the abdominal area. This is feeling pretty good. So I'm going to tuck my shoulders under a little bit more and lift a little higher. And once I lift my hips maybe four to six inches higher, I'm going to lower the pubic bone towards the floor. I'm pushing into the heels. I've actually lifted the fronts of my feet off the floor. So all the work's through my heels, which is the glutes, stabilizing the hip bones and allowing the sacrum to move deeply into the body, allowing the lumbar curve to come deeply in, seeing how that feels. It feels great. I still haven't gotten any nose from my body. So I'm going to go ahead and lift a little higher. Now we're getting close to that point where the pelvis naturally moves into extension. Now the pubic bone is definitely higher than my hip points. And you can check that on you. Your pubic bone's higher. You can look if it's okay on your neck. You could look a little bit and say, oh yeah, my pubic bone's higher than my hip points. This is hip extension. And then lengthened through the knees, knees reaching away from you. And, and what, now that I'm up this high, I'm going to moderate the amount of tone in my glutes. So I'm not pushing down as aggressively at this point. 
And the, the glutes at this point are hugging the sacrum pretty firmly. Just there's a natural tone there. You could feel your hands on your buttock. They're toned without me having to make them work. And now I'm going to experiment. Since I've still got a green light from my body, I'm going to lift my heels up. Right, so I'm contracting the sole of the foot, the calf, the hamstrings, the low back. So I'm bringing even more tone in. The hips have come higher. This is still feeling okay. And feeling the breath here coming through the body. I've actually relaxed my glutes all the way. If I feel there's tone in the upper glutes, but I'm not gripping where the sit bones meet the hamstrings, it's actually fairly relaxed there. The hamstrings for sure are working. Calves are working strongly here. Okay, and then we'll softly lower the heels, untuck the shoulders. Don't roll down. Come down in one smooth motion, just whoosh, lowering at once, just as you need to. Slide the hands under the low back. Let's see how much arch came in. And as the spine relaxes and sinks, are the sides of the low back softly lowering towards your hands in an equal way. Yeah, that feels really good. I'm maintaining that natural arch nicely now, whereas my back usually just collapses right to the floor and that right side heavier when my sacrum is out. So here my body's maintaining that curve and I don't feel, I'm not hugging my knees in, right? So if you tend to have a very strong arch in the back, um, you can hug the knees in, but if you're feeling good, don't do that. We don't need to tuck the pelvis and lose that, lose that curve and stretch it all out once we've worked so hard to reestablish that curve. Release the legs straight on the floor. Breathe and feel. Okay. And then let's bend the knees and roll over to your side. And grab your ball. So if there's any residual thickness, tightening, um, we, we can use the ball to help those muscles to coax them out. So right now, like both sides of my low back are feeling pretty pliable, um, equally thick. This is sometimes hard for students to feel, but this is with practice, you get to know your body better. So you're just feeling the texture of your low back. And the side where the sacrum, that upper sacrum like goes out and you have the upper sacrum discomfort, that side of the low back is often thicker. So I'm gonna take the ball to that side of my low back. For you, it might be the left side. And pushing into my heels, that'll elevate my hips. And I place the ball not on the spine. We're never on the spine. We don't roll out the spine. We roll out the muscles to the side of the spine. And we're off the bones, okay? So you're in that more, um, it's all muscular area between the top of the pelvis and the ribs. And once I set my the, the back onto the ball there, I'm going to let my tailbone go towards the floor, pubic bone down. So I've created that arch and then kind of wiggle around a little bit. But I'm trying to keep the arch. I'm not tucking the pelvis, lifting the pelvis to roll out. It's not wrong to do, but I feel like it's less helpful if we've just worked so hard on reestablishing the lumbar curve. If you find a good point, I've, I'm tipping my knees to my right because the ball's on the right side for me. Reverse these instructions if you're working the left side. Um, tip the knees to the side and feel more weight on the ball. Now I've got like a really good, I feel like I'm on a trigger point there, a tender point that's sensitive and because it's not overwhelming and it's not terrible, right? I can breathe through it. I can talk through it. I'm staying there, hovering there about 10, 11 seconds. And then I'll roll back to center. And I'm going to reposition the ball, find a new spot. Let the back arch, let the tailbone move towards the floor. Roll around a little. I'm pushing into the feet to create this rolling around movement. 
and it's tender. It's tender in there. Many of those muscles um, thickened, went into a little bit of spasm in response to that kind of aggressive exercise I did yesterday. And now we're saying, okay, we shorten those muscles up. We reestablish tone and stability. Now can we get rid of some of these knots? Okay, I'm going to take the ball out, breathe and feel. And oh, that feels great. And now I'm going to try the pelvic tilt. Pull back through both heels, create the arch. Wow, that's so much more capable and strong. Just gently push the heels away. My back easily moves towards the floor without crushing it down. Then I'm going to try one foot at a time through the pelvic tilt. Left leg is working well. Try the right leg so much better, so much less congestion. It's pain-free, feeling really good. Now, if you're at that pain-free stage and, and the sides feel much more equal, go ahead and take the ball to the sacral area. Uh, you're going to stand your back, but I'll you can turn to your side. If you need to see me, I'm going to stand up so you can see exactly where we're rolling out. So we're going to roll out this mid-buttock area. Um, but fair game is kind of anywhere on this buttock. Piriformis is a much maligned muscle, much misunderstood. It's, it's a very important stabilizer between the sacrum, mediating the sacrum and the leg bone. So it directly connects the leg bone to the sacrum. And a lot of yoga practices emphasize a lot of stretching of the outer buttock and stretching of the piriformis. Pigeon pose is a famous one, the variation where you fold forward over your front leg. Um, what I found is that because so many yoga practices are forward fold dominant and then so much stretching of the outer hip and piriformis, uh, that my sacrum was continually destabilized. So if instead you practice a variation of pigeon where you stay upright, which is the more classical version, and even a back bend, right, that can be a little safer for the sacrum, much safer, right? Or just stop stretching this area. I, I'm very moderate and rare with stretches to this area because my sacrum can tend to go out. I instead work on the strengthening moves that we did today. Okay, if you find a good point, can tip the knees to the side and the pressure will increase on the ball. Make sure your feet are pushing into the floor to offer you some stability. You're not just hanging on the ball. I do have an arch in my back as I'm um, putting pressure on the ball. And if you're holding a certain point, you hold it for about 9 to 11 seconds. It's just a guideline. You breathe and then you come back. Let's come off the ball and then we check in, okay? Check in with the hands under the lumbar spine, right? And then check in with the pelvic tilt using your feet to create the arch. Okay, so that's feeling even better. Now, <laughs> we released any knots there. I mean, we didn't spend like an hour doing it and that was deliberate, right? We were just inviting some of those trigger points to release. And we mostly focused on shortening, toning those muscles, and we're going to do that again. So on the affected leg, when you bring that leg up into the air in table pose now that, that I'm bringing my right leg behind me. You'll do the left leg if that's the affected hip for you. you tuck your head under and look and make sure the hips are level. So you might have to lower that ra the raised leg hip towards the floor slightly. And now without moving the pelvis or twisting the spine, rotate the raised leg in the socket. So you're going to turn it out slightly and then back in. So you're turning it out maybe 25 degrees, right? Not as far. You're not trying to go as far as you can go and you're not moving the pelvis. And this is working the piriformis. We're toning the piriformis. And then we bring the, both knees back to the floor. Take your knees as wide as the mat. Come down to your forearms. Isometrically stretch the knees apart. Feel the tone come into the sacrum. Push into your forearms. This feels 100 times better than it did when I first did it. I'm going to soften my actions and not do it much at all. Not being aggressive here. 
Now my isometric widening of the knees is about one to 3%. Pushing into my forearms is 10, 15%. And this feels really nice. Shift back with the exhale. Take an inhale to shift forward. Ah, that feels so good. Everything is feeling really nice, easy, clear, open. Okay, we'll do one more piriformis toning. Come up to straight arms. Orient yourself so that you can take that same leg, push it into a wall or a sofa. The danger is bringing the leg too high. So you can look back. You want your leg parallel to the floor. If you're flexible, that leg will be way too high. Lower is better. Push the outer heel into the wall and feel the tone come up through the outer hip, through the leg, and then lift the ball mounts of the foot and spiral on the heel. You're pivoting on the heel, externally rotating that leg. So it's the same exact action we did before, but you're pushing into the wall and you're feeling yourself gain some stability, gain some tone, some power. And let's go ahead and do the other side, mostly to compare. We're looking for the weight-bearing thigh to be perpendicular to the floor. Don't let that hip go out to the side. It strains the sacrum. So you look at the, tuck the chin, the hips are level. I can see the toes of my foot on the wall and my weight-bearing thigh is perpendicular. So you may have to shift your hips towards the side of the raised leg. Push the outer heel of that raised leg into the wall and then pivot on the heel, externally rotate the leg and then turn it back in so the kneecap faces the floor. And here, the side probably doesn't need it as much, but you're assessing, okay, how, how does this feel? Probably the greater work is on the weight-bearing hip. If it feels too strong, shift your hips even further away from that knee towards the leg that's up in the air on the wall. Okay. And then repositioning yourself on the mat and take the affected leg back. The leg is straight push the foot down into the floor without locking your knee so you feel the the quad the front of the thigh turn on you feel your belly turn on once you've got that firm the buttock and lift the leg bring it to about parallel to the floor and then the opposite arm reaches forward and switch sides left leg back or non-affected hip back and the foot's on the floor, unlock the knee, push the foot into the floor, you'll feel the front of the thigh engage, and as you press your hands, you'll feel the belly engage too. So we have that side of the core working, now firm the glute, lift the leg, the back of the core is working, opposite arm can reach forward, you're in your pointer dog. Okay, one more time on each side. First leg goes back, push it into the floor first, quad engages, belly engages, tone the glute, then lift the leg, don't grip, float opposite arm forward. Second side, foot pushes into the floor, tone the front, tone the glute, lift the leg, opposite arm forward. All right, very good. And then we're coming to the knees as wide as the mat, back down to the forearms, gently stretch the knees apart, moderate your tone, Goldilocks principle, it's like you want your porridge just the right temperature, great sensitivity here, feeling the body, feeling it respond, pushing into the forearms, keeping your tone through your belly, shoulder blades are wide. Use the inhale, shift forward, exhale, halfway back, don't go past mid shin, even if you can go further, inhale forward, exhale back. Follow your breath, rocking slowly.
very good. And then I recommend a prone Shavasana where you come to the belly. I'm letting my legs turn in. That feels really nice. You could always turn the legs out. If you're not sure what to do, try them both. Do the one that your body says is better for you. Lying on the belly makes sure that I don't lose that lumbar curve that I worked so hard to create. Allows the spine to move forward in the body. After having your head turned to one side for a while, you can turn it to the other. And then rest here for a few more minutes. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.